All right, so 2023 is halfway done, and uh, I wanted to just make a, another video where I kind of uh, talk about movies that are like sort of like sequels or kind of like connected to a video I might have done where I've talked about a certain franchise or a director. And uh, that's what I'm basically going to just do is just talk about some movies that came out in 2023. Not in ranking order, just in release order. And I just wanted to get my thoughts on some of these movies out. So M.I. Jamlon is a very hit or miss director. He either makes great stuff like The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable. Or just total ter trash movies like The Last Airbender or After Earth. And once in a while, you'll just get like a pretty decent uh, suspenseful thriller like The Village or Old. And I think Knock at the Cabin for me, I, I really liked it. I thought the suspense was good. The acting, especially from Dave Bautista, was great. And everyone else I think is really good, especially the child actor, which is rare sometimes for movies, but she was really good. And... Um, yeah, I, and I, the cinematography is great. I think it was like filmed on 65 millimeter. It looks beautiful. It, I think it is probably like his best looking movie. I because I feel like uh, his movies like since Glass they've been look a lot better, they look like a lot cleaner, and uh, his direct direction is not annoying. And also this one, I think he had a lot more in more help in the writing. So that's why like I think the writing is good in this. Uh, the only gripe with the film is that I think um, M. Night Shyamalan doesn't really know how to use flashbacks sometimes. There's too many like flashbacks, like it cuts back random. Like, there's a part where Rupert Grint, who's in the movie, very briefly, there's like this whole thing uh, where, because the movie's about, really about these like gay dads who have to decide which one of them are they going to kill to save the world. They kind of like, I guess what they, they previously had the, an altercation with one of, uh, you know, like the people, like the four strangers that are at their door before in the past where River Grin was probably this like some homophobic guy that assaulted Kristoff from Frozen in a bar once. And the thing is that they kind of like, they, they theorize that it's the guy from the bar and they don't flash back to the experience yet until like minutes later, like like 40 minutes or 30 or 40 minutes, you know, later. And it's just like, why couldn't you just do it then? And, um, and yeah, it was just uh, kind of like just one of Shyamalan's uh, faults is just trying to have a good um, scene like flashback to regular time. But overall, I really like Knock at the Cabin. It's just one of my favorite films of the year. And I'd, I'd recommend if you go see it if you want an original film by, uh, by an auteur director. So uh, go check it out. So Scree 6, how I like to kind of fun, fun call it because they just kind of like mushed the M and a 6. So I just like calling it Scree 6, and it's the second Scream movie to be directed by this, like, this uh, directing duo. I don't know their names. The directors of Ready or Not, because Wes Craven, you know, is unfortunately dead. And um, I reviewed the, the last five Scream movies when the last Scream movie came out. And I liked, when I saw the last Scream movie, I liked it for like the first two halves, and then I think I just didn't like the, the last third of the movie. But rewatching again for the sixth film, I love uh, that last Scream movie even more, actually. I think uh, it, it was actually one of the best movies of 2022. Um, I, I'd say like, after like looking back at my list, that video, I think maybe I've replaced like Avatar with that film. And, um, I guess, like, I think overall, I just, I love, um, the Scream franchise. Like, I love, I love every single one besides Scream 3, which, even then, I don't, I don't think Scream 3 is a bad movie. It's just, it's just a movie that had so much production issues with the script. Um, but 
Anyway, Scream 6, I also really enjoyed it. I loved more of the, the lore that it brought to it. Uh, I really do like this, uh, this new, this new cast, uh, this new, like, trilogy, I guess, maybe they're, this is what they're doing, of, around the, the Carpenter sisters. Um, I like, uh, seeing the Kirby character from Scream 4 come back. Uh, you know, I, I think that was good to bring her back. And, uh, it's just, I like the new setting in New York City. It really, I think the, the setting, it really, really worked. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a good change of pace because, you know, like, the first one is in, like, a, you know, small town. And the second one is in a, uh, college. Third one is in Hollywood. Fourth one and fifth one are just, like, back to the first one. And, uh, it's good to see this one go back to, um, go to a new location that I liked. Which, uh, made for, uh, you know, just a lot of good, um, chase scenes, so... Overall, I think uh, this is a good addition to the uh, the franchise, and uh, I'm glad to see whatever they bring next for Scream 7, because I know they're taking a break from uh, this franchise a bit, because they probably don't want to run, run it to the ground. So, uh, I give them props, they're going to take a break and uh, think what they're going to do next, so I'm excited to see whatever comes next. <laughs> So one of my favorite like movie franchises or series is definitely the Fast and the Furious franchise. Uh, I really loved watching all of them back in 2022 and enjoyed watching them all again uh, this this year with uh, Fast X. And I also got the, the privilege to watch um, uh, Better Luck Tomorrow, the um, Justin Lin film that he made before he did Tokyo Drift that has the character of Han in it. So that was kind of fun, a uh, really great movie, and it's actually my second favorite of the franchise, funny or not. And uh, with this 10th film coming along, uh, it had a lot of uh, red signs. Uh, you know, Justin Lin actually quit the production of this film, and Justin Lin has done most of the movies. And uh, was re now it was replaced with uh, Louis Terrier, uh, the director of The Incredible Hulk and the... Uh, Transporter films, the first two with Jason Statham, which I haven't seen any of them. And um, no one really liked the last one, and I thought, well, I think the, la the last two I don't think were as good as just like the previous uh, four films that came. Uh, like Hobbs and Shaw, I really don't like. I, I think actually, out of the entire series, it's my least favorite. And F9, I don't think it was bad. I just think. Um, I didn't really think the brother thing didn't work. Uh, I, I just don't think maybe John Cena overall should have just been the bad guy. I think he just should have been a, um, like, more of a, his brother, but kind of like a, just, they just don't like each other, but he's still a protagonist. But overall, I, I still liked the action. I didn't mind the space stuff. Like, it was going to come eventually, and I, I'm, I'm accepting the, this franchise to just get weird, but... Fast X does, like, dial it down, and I don't mind it. Uh, I still think the action is still fun, and it's still insane. And, um, this is also, like, the beginning of a trilogy that's a trilogy that's gonna end the entire Fast and the Furious saga. So, they really want to end this on a, off on a bang. Even though I think they just prefer if they just did one more movie and that was it, but, yeah, they... They, Universal wants to just keep milking this franchise out, and uh, this is how they're going to do it. And how did I think of this one? I still liked Fast X. It's the 10th film, and it's still really, really fun. Vin Diesel's still great. Um, John Cena coming back as uh, Uncle Jacob is really fun, actually. I like his role. Um... I guess like thing the only issue is that they're just I think the the team is split up too much of for most of the film. Uh, you know you've got like Roman, Tej, Ramsey, and the uh, Han in London with the uh, Shaw, and it's it's I mean it's fun, but you know you wish um, they were all together, but they're probably all like they're they're building up to a uh, you know where they all come back together in the next one, and uh, you also got like. Charlie Theron, Cypher, who... I, I don't know, like, what they're really doing with her, right? Because I guess with Jason Momoa is now truly the big bad guy, and uh, Cypher is just not really going to be the um, the main bad guy of it all that's... 
gonna be like who they gotta take down and that's it so and uh, I think Jason Momoa as the villain was actually really fun I he's he was definitely funny and threatening and uh, I hope this really is like the truly like the best Fast and the Furious villain and not a villain that will just turn into a good guy the next movie I really just hope they don't do that and I don't have a problem with villains becoming bad guys it's just that it's getting too tiresome they're doing it too much um i do kind of like the other ones like uh, brie larson i surprisingly liked who i just don't like in uh, any of her movies because i just uh, yeah i haven't seen room but look she's just every i just find that every movie she's in she's just playing like her ego is just like sticking out too much but in this she i feel like she actually respects the cast she actually respects vin diesel and i do kind of like her character but you know what if it's meant because her role is meant to be you know kurt russell's daughter you know mr nobody's daughter but couldn't they just make it kate hudson for fun because that's like his daughter well stepdaughter but really is her that's really is her father but that really would have like fit into the theme of um family so i don't know that, that's what i would like but she's probably not marketable um i forgot the guy's name alan richardson i think plays jack reacher i didn't know there was a jack reacher show that someone told me after the film he's like a interesting uh, character um i don't know if he'll come back in any way and uh yeah I, I think just a good action movie very solid uh, i'm excited to just see how the franchise goes and uh universal make a uh, uh ludicrous and tyrese gibson team up movie so another fucking Hobbs and Shaw movie which I don't want to sit through again so Spider-Man uh, across the universe seems to be everyone's favorite film of the year so far and what do I have to think about it well I really did like Into the Spider-Verse I thought it was a really good solid Spider-Man story good introduction to Miles Moral Morales to you know non-comic book readers um, I liked, really liked Jake Johnson as, uh, Peter B. Parker, like, Taylor Seinfeld as Spider-Gwen, and, uh, I liked, well, I, I, I just, overall, I enjoyed the film, the animation was really good, it was very different at the time, and, uh, now I feel like this, this type of animation that they're doing is just not gonna be interesting anymore in the future, because I think Puss in Boots kinda take, took the animation style a bit, and, uh, the new Ninja Turtles movie is exactly that. But uh, this new one, I I didn't really, I was very hesitant to talk about this one because I was like, I want to really develop my own thoughts when we get to the next one, Beyond the Spider-Verse, which I don't know when it's coming out again. I think it's coming out next year, maybe not. I think there might be a delay. But I gotta just admit, I'm really not a fan of this trope of like, you make a first movie that's great and then uh, you want to make a sequels but instead you just you want to make um like you know you get stuff like matrix reloaded matrix revolution which are just meant to be like these two-parters and then i think we then worse the pirates movies you know dead man's chest and at world's end just terrible uh i i, I hate the trend of just making um like a trilogy and you just call it a trilogy because the first two are like split up into different movies. Uh, it only really worked for Back to the Future and that should have really been it. I'm just, I'm overall, I'm tired of um, these type of sequels and I wish they didn't do it for this one. But I still think this was still a very fun movie. The characters are still fun. You know, you get more into the relationship of Gwen Stacy and um, you know, Miles Morales. And I like this idea that Miguel O'Hara, um, you know, Oscar Isaac kind of like has this literal like organization of Spider-Man from different multiverse that kind of are basically now like dimension cops going around like setting the multiverse straight. And there's a lot of good references to the past films. I like even the the Venom uh, woman, the, the woman that was in the Venom movies, the, that cameo was fun. And overall, I, I did enjoy it. I just, I don't care anymore for these, like, plots. Like, I wish they just gave us a movie. Like, that's why I liked the last one. It was a 
three arc, uh, three act, you know, structured film, beginning and an end. This film is just beginning, half middle, and just big cliffhanger. And I, I don't have a problem with the cliffhanger. It's just that in this, in what this movie is doing, I just hated it. I don't. Just guys, stop making this style of uh, movies. I I don't want these anymore with trilogies. All right, so just stop it. But it's still fun. I like Jason Schwartzman as the as the villain. And look, I do like these movies overall, but I gotta I, I gotta get more of my thoughts when we get to Beyond the Spider Verse. And um, yeah, I give it the best animated feature this year. So if you guys didn't know already, uh, Wes Anderson is one of my favorite directors, and he's the only director where I actually made a like a ranking video. Um, I, I did make a video on Spielberg where I just talked about every single film he's made because I watched all of Spielberg's films. But Wes Anderson uh, is another one of those few directors where I've seen every single one of his movies because I'm insane. And I love every single Wes Anderson film. Uh, even Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I'm not a big fan of, I think it's a little overrated. I still think it has some good things in it. But now on to Asteroid City, which people either like or don't like. Because Wes Anderson has kind of gotten to this point where you either love his films or you just hate his films. And outside movie going audiences, I don't think they're really going to attach to this film. You've really just got to be into Wes Anderson or had seen a Wes Anderson film and liked it. And for me, uh, Asteroid City, I'm going to just declare as my favorite film of the year until Oppenheimer or Killers of the Flower Moon comes out. And that will probably also just blew me away. But I just loved Asteroid City just because I love uh, Wes Anderson. I love his style. I love um, the look of his films. Especially this one. Like this one was... Because the last one was complete um, uh, black and white, French Dispatch. I didn't care for the uh, the black and white that much. Uh, I like this one is like complete, like very very colorful. Everyone is just everyone looks colorful, and um, the production design I think is amazing uh, for this just like small town. And um, I should also, there are black and white like sequences, but that's because, you know, kind of a spoiler alert because trailers don't say this, but the movie is essentially like a, a play or some kind of like TV broadcast of a play. And that's what the whole story is around. And those sequences are very artsy. And that's actually what turned my friends away from uh, watching this movie or, or like, you know, from not liking it as much as I did. It's just that stuff was weird, but... I kind of was expecting like a Wes Anderson film to just be like around a a play or something because if you've seen like stuff like Rushmore, Royal Tenenbaums, Moonrise Kingdom, or even his last film, they're all about there's some there's like a there's a play in all of them, and so I'm not really surprised that he got to this point where they're like his movie is centered around like a play within a play or something, but I still loved it. I you know just another good Wes Anderson film and. This is also by Roman Coppola, who also did, they also did Moonrise Kingdom, my second favorite Wes Anderson film, which is an amazing film. And this one also is just amazing. I love the acting still. This, uh, and this also had some new like actors that have never like been in his films, like Tom Hanks and Steve Carell. Which I think Steve Carell, I, I forgot which one replaced who, Tom Hanks or Steve Carell replaced Bill Murray, because Bill Murray is not in this movie, surprisingly, and he's been in all of his movies since Rushmore, but I think Bill Murray got COVID when the when this film went into production, I think. And I, I just forget who it was again, if it was Hanks or Corral that uh, Murray's supposed to play. I would assume Tom Hanks because Tom Hanks kind of like, sort of almost looks like Bill Murray and almost acts like Bill Murray a bit. But I'm, I'm not sure. Um, also, because I, I do miss some of his like regular actors that he has in this, like Francis McDormand is uh, is absent from this. Uh, I like to see Ray Fiennes come back, but there's a lot of like Wes Anderson actors that always don't, don't come back. Like I still want to see Luke Wilson come back. Owen Wilson also isn't in this one, but um, overall I still 
loved Asteroid City. It's my favorite film of the year. Everything about it is great. Stop motion Alien was really good. Nice seeing stop motion in a live action film, which is very rare. And really Wes Anderson is the only one that incorporates actual like stop motion. So um, if uh, you don't like any of the movies that are coming out besides Spider-Man, you know, like blockbuster movies, just go see this. Come, just go see it. It's just, it's the best film so far of the year. You'll love everything about it. It's all, it's all beautiful. All right, so this is probably the movie I imagine some people skipped all the way to. Just hear my thoughts on Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And this is a movie I've been really waiting for almost nine years. Ever since I finished watching all four of the films back in like 2014 when I was like eight. So I've been waiting for this movie a while and... You know, it's been going through a lot of phases in its production. Biggest one, obviously, being, you know, the director swap from Steven Spielberg, you know, dropping d dropping off the project with uh, James Magold coming in. And I think um, as, like, I watched all of Spielberg's movies and seeing how he ended up, you know, from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull to, like, The Fablemans, I just, I don't think Spielberg would have made a great movie anyway. I look I'm sorry I just I, I don't want to get off on tangent but overall I think Spielberg is just done for me as a director I don't think he's just that good anymore and that's why I think James Mangold was definitely I, I think he was the ideal choice and they obviously picked him because of the success that Logan was you know getting an Oscar nomination for adapted screenplay and just it being like a fantastic conclusion to the Wolverine ca character so they obviously thought that this was like the best guy to finish off Indiana Jones and while I think Logan is a better film in concluding like a character that's been around for a long time I still really do enjoy this movie it still has its issues um I'll agree it's like the fourth best Indiana Jones movie because there's gonna be I'm gonna just spoil it and I think what I like that this film did is it actually like went for the MacGuffin device of what it can do because I think Kingdom of the Crystal Skull Lucas really fell flat on trying to tell his Indiana Jones alien story because I really do think the whole time traveling aspect worked in this it didn't I didn't it wasn't like the predictable thing where like the whole thing backs backfires on the bad guys well it kind of does in the time traveling but not in the way where they just explode which I kind of liked. It didn't have the, the same cliche ending that Raiders, Last Crusade, and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull already did. I actually liked that they went for the time traveling stuff. They actually did it. And that's why I do like it. It's a little outside the box. CGI, I don't think is that great. Um, but, you know, I think... I think it's a little better than how it was in, like, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Like, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull CGI does not hold up today whatsoever. There's, like, no, like, good, like, CGI effect besides, like, all the practical stuff, which is still good. And I think the, and I will say, like, I do think the opening, I did kind of enjoy the opening. Even the, even if the Harrison Ford CGI double looked weird, I think it still was a fun sequence any, overall. But it did make me think, what if these Indiana Jones movies that were made later were not like live action at all like what if they just made them animated you know what if they got you know robert zemecka's uh motion capture thing and just had done a like animated indiana jones movie instead i don't know why i feel like they should have just done it yeah i i would rather yeah like just do that an animated indiana jones film in world war ii instead of this but you know uh people just like seeing real actors overall there's a lot of people that are saying you know the movie's woke uh or it's okay and i'm leaning towards the okay side i don't want to hail the movie as great but it is still like a fun movie and i do deeply think james mangled really tried his best to bring a satisfying satisfying conclusion to indy and a jones overall even if last and I, i'm not someone who thinks oh well, they should have ended at last crusade because i think that was just like the end to that trilogy there's still a lot more of Indiana Jones that could that should still be told in film. 
well, not anymore, because Harrison Ford's done and he's too old, and I don't really want to see anyone else play Indiana Jones, of course, because, you know, when he when Harrison Ford dies, Indy dies, and I kind of agree what he has to say on that. So, Indiana Jones, Dial Destiny, not my favorite of the series, but it's definitely one of my. It's just it's a. I just think it's overall a good addition to our franchise and a character that I love overall. So there, thank you very much guys for watching this video. Uh, I hope you liked it and I also should have said I sorry if I never really finished my young Indiana Jones review. I just I really couldn't finish like I watched every single episode and I should have maybe I, I do wish I made some kind of video where I just made like a vi episodes to watch but I'm, I just couldn't have the time to do it so I just overall I just wanted to get my thoughts out on Dial of Destiny and just other films that I felt like I should just like follow up on on videos I've done. So out of all the movies, definitely see Asteroid City and Knock at the Cabin, Scream 6. And I'd still say check out, you know, Fast X and Indiana Jones and Spider-Verse, but definitely go out and see Asteroid City right now in theaters. All right. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.